we begin reading from the Gospel of St. Mark in this liturgical year, and notice that he begins not like Matthew and Luke with the story of Bethlehem and Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and the donkey, and so forth. Um, he begins with the Isaiah the prophet, predicting that the Lord would send a messenger ahead of him to prepare his way. And of course, that is John the Baptist, who came, appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. John's role was to be the immediate prophet right before Jesus and to prepare the way of the Lord. He was calling people to prepare their hearts. When the reading in the first reading speaks about the valleys being filled in and the mountains laid low and so forth, it was customary in those days that when a dignitary, a king or a very important person was coming to town, they would literally go out and smooth out the road. They'd fill in the ruts and they'd rake it and so forth and fill it out so it would be a smooth passage for this person to come into town. The Lord's using that image here in the scriptures today, the path that, we're to re that he's preparing is the path to our hearts. Christ is coming and wants to spend a new way in our hearts. And so we need to listen to the prophet. We need to listen to the gospel and prepare ourselves for the celebration of Christmas. John was a man, it says he was fed on locusts and wild honey, wore clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. Medieval pictures picture John looking like he really was in bad need of a haircut and a shave and uh, very skinny. I suppose if he was just eating locusts and honey, he would have been pretty thin. But the point is that John went out into the desert. Most street preachers go into the main town and they preach on the corners. But John goes out into the desert and the amazing thing is people followed him. They wanted to hear what he had to say. For years and years, the people were waiting the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy that we heard in the first reading. And that prophecy comes at this time in the gospel when John is predicting the one who is not even worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. The Savior is coming into the world. And that's what we're celebrating at Christmas, and it's very important for us. Christmas must not be just a day that comes and goes. It has to be one that truly affects our lives. There was a woman, I may have told this story before, who really disliked Christmas, decorating for Christmas. She thought it was a lot of bother. And so one year she decided she just wasn't going to do it at all. Well, then she started to feel self-conscious and thought, what would her neighbors think and what would her families think if there were no decorations at her house? So she went out and bought an artificial Christmas tree. And she had a carpenter build a closet in the end of her living room. And she put the tree in the closet, had a big wide door the, the closet did. She decorated it beautifully. And then she just opened the door. And there it was. The day after Christmas, she closed the door. And then she figured every year all she had to do was walk in the living room, open the door, and there would be the tree. Well, I don't think John the Baptist would go with that. You know, he, how, how is that really preparing for Christmas? All the things that we do to highlight the fact that the Savior is born. And most importantly, we need to prepare our hearts. It can't be the same old thing every year. And so we ask the question, what is it that's getting in the way of a deeper relationship with Christ in my own heart? What things kind of block a deeper relationship? Habits of sin, um, lack of charity, a failure to pray as much as I should. All those kinds of things kind of block a deeper relationship with Christ. And so in this next couple of weeks, as we're preparing to celebrate Christmas, we need to ask those questions. We need to go into the desert. Now, we don't have a desert around here anywhere where you can go, but a quiet place, a place where you're undisturbed, no radio, no TV, no computers, nothing to read, no, no music, just silence. And just put yourself in the presence of God and say, Lord, help me to see myself as you see me. 
What is it that you want me to change in my life so that you may become more evident to others? And if we sit and ask that question, we're bound to come up with some things, either think sins we need to stop doing or failures in doing good things that we failed to do. And if we do that, then we're going to be just opening our heart to the Holy Spirit, opening our heart to Jesus, so that he can truly be more present in our world through us this coming Christmas. As I mentioned last week, it's wonderful to give gifts because this Christmas is about the gift, the gift of God to us. And so in our giving gifts to each other, it ought to be an opportunity for us to pray for them and to help them to see Christ more fully. So today on this second Sunday of Advent, and this week, this year, Advent's pretty short. The fourth Sunday of Advent is Christmas Eve, so we miss a whole week. Um, but that just gets us closer to the celebration of Christmas. So today we thank the Lord for his words that come to us through John the Baptist. And we thank him for the church. We thank him for calling us to be a part of his everlasting kingdom. <laughs> 